Welcome back to another episode of the Cast Patrol podcast. We're joined by a very special guest this week, Lebanon International and Bulldogs young star, Jacob Kiraz. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, boys. Mate, it's a pleasure. I look like you right now in this doggy's jersey, but <laughs> hey, not as fit, obviously. <laughs> but... I was about to say, I'm looking at two Jacobs on the couch here. <laughs> yeah, you know, back in the day, before the injuries, I, I could have been a Kiraz. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they always say. They always say that, don't they? They always say. Oh, okay, take us through your development. Where did it all start, Jacob? Um, yeah, I had a pretty um, different road to lots of people. Um, I was a Bulldogs junior, so I played for St. John's Eagles yep. um, in the Bulldogs comp. Played the development squads. Um, I never played Howard Mats. I didn't make Howard Mats. So then I played SG Ball. I didn't make SG Ball for dogs, so I went to Dragons. So I actually played a year there. And then, yeah, from Dragons, um, I got picked up by Cowboys. And oh, I actually wow. signed a three-year deal there. And the last year was a top 30. And I was like 17 at the time. So I was like, I couldn't turn Huge. it down. Yeah, like um, no other clubs offered me. So they offered me, but it was like not top 30. And at the time, you know, it was massive for me because I was like, it would have been 20 or 21. So I went there, but then everyone knows like COVID hit. Had to come back home because the younger squads were all like, um, it all got um, cancelled. Yeah, so, so there's no only, game time or no, anything. No, the only... Like squad that was training was nro and i remember they were speaking about they didn't want me to go home they were speaking about they wanted to put me in the squad the nro and i was like freaking out because i was only 18 because yeah. they didn't want me to leave but then um they couldn't because it was like a restriction of 30 players and i understood so i went home and then the um, person who got me to cowboys recruitment manager actually went to newcastle knights and he um he said to me listen i can get you closer to home i want you to move to newcastle with me i want you to take me so we went, did a little bit like um yeah, he got me there and the other day I got there and yeah, and then now I'm, you know, got back to dogs and yeah, I'm loving it. So what was that move from going across to the dogs that was there a player, was there a conversation that was had with someone at the club that got you there? Yeah, um, well, I was at Newcastle and I signed a, a dev and top 30. But I remember I just felt like it wasn't my opportunity. My opportunity wasn't going to come there. You know, you just have a feeling when you train, you have a gut feeling like when you train, is it like you're going to be there, is it going to be here? And I just... I remember actually speaking to my parents about it. I had one year left in the top 30 and I remember saying the like going into the preseason saying, you know, I, I have a I have a feeling that this is not gonna, you know, I don't know, but I'll, I'll go preseason, I'll kill it, and then we'll see what happens. I remember I went preseason, I was probably at my fittest, strongest. And yeah, I just had a gut feeling. I don't know what it was, but you know, I'm a huge believer in God and faith. So it probably was God just telling me. Um, yeah, I remember speaking to my parents saying, listen, I I'll I was speaking to my manager saying, listen, if you can get me back to Sydney um, after my contract ends, you know, um, I'll be happy to go because, you know, I don't think the opportunity is here for me. And then, yeah, he came and said, listen, like, dogs want you now. I was like, wow. now? He's like, yeah, but listen, they the only problem is they can't offer you top 30 because there's no top 30 spots left. Jeez, so a bit then, of a risk going from top 30 so to was, not top 30. I remember 30. having arguments with my mum my and dad about it. Like, they backed me and even my mates, but they said, you're crazy. Like, what are you doing? And I remember speaking, I said, I'd rather... Like I was training a trial for, I remember literally 12 weeks as well. Far out. So and this was yeah. like the end of, uh, this was like January. So I, this was like after Christmas. So I remember signing it. I remember said, you know, I'm going to do it. Like I want to, and you know, I'm I'm a Lebanese person as well. It's It was hard for me to leave home, but yeah. you know, I said, I'll do whatever it takes, you know, for my dream. So when I got home, you know, it was the best thing ever back home. And I remember I had 12 weeks. So I went in dogs and at the time they signed so many players as well. So everyone was like to me, why are you going signing? But then, at that at that point, I wasn't even thinking about NRL. So what year was that? 22. 22. That's when I debuted that year. Okay. So did you play any for Knights, like um, New South Wales Cup or anything? Yeah, I played Cup. I played. Yeah. Um, I remember that year I played like eight games, but then um, COVID happened again. And then oh, that, that second wave. The second came... wave. And then I remember that's when it came into the preseason and I said I have a feeling because I remember there was like stuff in Newcastle camps and I was a top 30 and they weren't going to bring me on it and stuff like that. So then I... Like I, like I said, I hold no grudges against anyone. You know, I'm it's just it is what it is. It's a business at the end of the day. But at the time, I just needed the opportunity. And, you know, I said, you know, I want a fresh, you know, it was hard as well because I got rejected as, you know, I was a dog's junior. I got rejected uh, for SG Ball and Held Match. So, yeah. you know, it was hard for me to go. At the time, it was, you know, it was political back then as well. So I, I had to try and put my pride away and say, you know what, like it's all changed now. And, you know, I want to, I'll go there and no one will know me and, you know, I just prove myself. So, yeah, I backed myself and, you know, I thank God I did. And 
even my parents said, you know, it's crazy. We like every time I look back at that, you know, I think as well. I mean, even when I got to dogs, everyone was like, when you top 30 and stuff? And then I was like, <laughs> yeah, but then I just, yeah, they said, bro, good on you and stuff like that. Well, you could, out, you could yeah. easily be salty and be like, no, I'm not going back, you know, like they didn't give yeah. me the chance when I was young. Yeah, like, 100%. why do you want me now? But yeah. no, you did the right thing. Was it always a dream to play for the dogs or play in the NRL as a young kid? Yeah, 100%. You know, um, or a big time dream playing in the NRL. But I remember I used to go to nearly every game with the dogs. Um, every Friday when, you know, they were playing heaps of Friday night games when I was younger, go because uh, I used to go swimming lessons at Homebush and go <laughs> ANZ straight away. Yeah, good so, time. yeah, it was the best. <laughs> so I remember a young kid, me and my cousins, brothers, we all love it. We love We honestly love dogs so much. So, um, yeah, it's always been a dream. But I remember when I, when I was like 13, 14, I remember saying to my mom, I was like, do you want to play? But she, the mom said to me, and it was crazy because she's like, do you want to be an NRL player? And I was like, yeah, like I want to be an NRL. Like this is what I want to do. And the mom said, Listen, like you know, only two percent make it. Like, and I was like, oh, thanks, mum. <laughs> yeah, like, bring me down. <laughs> I know, but then it's you know, when you think about it, it's actually like it's true. Like, but yeah, thank God, you know, everything worked out, and yeah. Well, yeah, it definitely did work out because that year, twenty twenty two, round seven, you make your debut yeah. against uh, Brisbane Broncos. Yeah. How? What? Uh, first of all, what what was that feeling like of being told by who was the coach in twenty twenty two? Trent Barrett. Trent Barrett. Yeah. yeah. Well, how did it all come about? Yeah, I remember. I couldn't debut till round 11 because right. I was a trainer trial. So uh, I remember that was no one in my head about NRL. I remember playing cup and I remember actually saying, you know, I'm going to do good in cup and then I know everything will just work out. Like I didn't want to think of NRL because, you know, I was step by step. Mm. And then, yeah, I remember playing cup and I was actually doing pretty good. And, you know, the I remember actually, but like not, I remember I was training full time and then out of nowhere they put the trainer trollers training part time. This was like round three. So now I went to train part time for probably three, like I reckon a week. And bro, I was like at the point like, like you know, I was like a bit like not down, but I was like, you know, I'm doing good. But then I remember one game later I played good and then they said to us, no, nah, like listen, we're keeping you here. We need to keep you here. We're keeping you and maybe three other trainer trolls, like, you know, you're doing good. Wow. And at the time dogs weren't doing too good. Mm-hmm. It was like, I think they've lost like a couple of their first games. And then, yeah, so I was happy with how I was performing in the cup. And then I remember, yeah, round seven, everyone got COVID. And then I get a phone call, a phone call from my cup coach. I remember NRL used to be in early for video and mm. cup used to come around an hour later. He's like, listen, um, everyone's had COVID. Um, we just need you to come and watch video. And I honestly didn't think of it big because mm. I thought, you know, the games at the end of the week, this was like a Monday. I was like, oh, this was like, sorry, this was a Wednesday. So I'm like, games on a, I think it was a Saturday or Friday. He's like, I didn't think anything would be big. I just said, come in, watch video. I get in and it's outside backs only. It's only me, Fox at the time, um, Aaron Shop, and um, Ock, Ock and Bull, yeah. and Dufty. What, everyone else got knocked out from COVID? So <laughs> Naden was supposed to be gotten, um, he got he knocked out. Avo was supposed to be and got yep. knocked out because then Shoppy was back in the team because of that because everyone got knocked out and then I came, but I didn't wow. think anything. And then so literally- COVID was a blessing in disguise in the end. <laughs> like, yeah, so then, <laughs> yeah, it's like crazy. And then I remember the coach was telling me, there and he's like, yeah, so, um, you know, this is what's going to happen. He's like, so, Shoppy, you're going to be on the left. We're going to put you against Katoni. And, um, yeah, um, Karaz, like, um, you know, you're going to – how do you feel about guarding thing? And I was like – and he's like, yeah, you're going to be, you know, you're our right center. You're our right center. And I, I'm not even joking. Wow. I, that much goosebumps. I was in shock. I actually didn't – it didn't even hit me until, like, I went out there like, listen, call your family because it's going to get leaked very soon. Like, it'll get leaked by yeah. – everyone will just find out which luckily I did because then it just got leaked that I was debuting. So, yeah, told the family, but, yeah. It was just... And who are you coming up against? Uh, against Farnsworth. Farnsworth. Oh, wow. Ooh, That's Herbie. not an easy task yeah, on your Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, I like, he's one of my favourite players, to be honest, as well. So, at the, time, it was, at the time, it was peaking too. So, yeah, yeah I remember I was, you know, I was, I was keen. So and and how did you go in your debut? Yeah, I, I still, that's one of my favourite games and probably one of my best games, I reckon. Like, I've had a couple of really good games, but I reckon that was my best game. Just because, too, like... I was coming from Cup. No one knew who I was. No mm. one knew about anything about me. So, you know, there's no like st- now the stat sheet. Everyone's probably thinking I'm offloading and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like everyone yells it out when you're playing. But when, you, when you're young, you come in, no one really knows anything. So nah. you just go in. So like we play Super Coach, we know every single player and we didn't hear anything about you. That's what I'm saying. And you made yeah. you debut and we're like, fuck, this guy's good base stats. Yeah. He's running up, <laughs> yeah. offloading tackle breaks. Like, hey, we've got to keep an eye on this yeah, guy. Yeah, nah. So, yeah, it was like, I remember my first tackle was paying us off the kickoff. And oh. Josh, Josh Jackson was next to me. I was outside him and yeah. he was like one of my play, favorite players to play alongside. So I remember he was just jeeing me up saying, like, that's us. Like, we're going to get him. That's us. Like, get up, get up. Fucking and I was just like, well, my first tackle was paying us. So wow. that's a welcome to NRL. Yeah, welcome to first grade. 100%. Man. Did you grow up like idolizing anyone or you said you like Herbie Farnworth? Is anyone in the past? Yeah. Um, you know, obviously I had Grub, Josh Reynolds. Yeah. My favorite player, yeah. 
So he was up there just because of the way he played with passion and heart, you know. I've always said if I was playing first grade, that's how I would play. Just, you know, everyone, like to be in NRL, you need to have talent. Everyone has talent. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, it's the ones who play with heart and stuff and, you know, you want to be known for that. I've always said I want to be known for the person yeah. who plays with heart and stuff like that. So, yeah, Grubb was massive. And obviously you got Hazem on the wing back yeah. in the days. I wasn't, you know, that old, but, you know, he's a, especially being a Lebanese winger as well. So, yeah, he's good and... Yeah, recently my own teammate Critter. I've been watching heaps of yeah. him. I've actually watched heaps of vision of him. So, yeah, now that he's actually with me, I can you know learn off him personally. But before that last year, I was watching heaps of video on him how yep. he defends because best defensive center. Oh yeah, by far. So probably the best overall center. Oh, arguably, like him, Manu, Trell is Trell's center. But yeah, do you eventually want to be a center? I know you played a bit of fullback for Leb Lebanon, yeah. and then growing up, a bit of five eight. What is your ideal position? Yeah, right now. Um, yeah, right now it doesn't really bother me. I just want to, I just want to win. Yeah, I'll do anything to win. <laughs> honestly, like if I'm on the True. wing center, I, like I just want to, you know, whatever's going to help the team, I'll go. But yeah, obviously, you know, I like back in the year I played center. I love center, and also, you know, I wouldn't mind, you know, down the track as well. I probably see myself as a fullback, to be honest. Yeah, how are the uh, ball skills? Yeah, pr like pretty good, man. Yeah, I just need obviously you get the reps there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's pretty good. You know, once you get the ball in your hands, it brings flashbacks. But right now, like I said, I just want to do whatever's best for the team, and you know, just just win games, and I'm happy. Have they given you any indication as to what you might be playing or which side this um, year? Yeah, right now, so I'm still coming back from an injury, so my back injury, so I'm just starting to get in the team stuff, so. Right now, I remember um, they just, you know, I'm training at both at the moment yep. and whatever's best for the team. So I'm getting reps at center and wing and it's good. Like, I want to get reps everywhere. So, you know, you never know what happens, injuries mm -hmm. and that. So in the year, if they need to move me, I'm ready to go. 100% so. and then a few of the new signings as well as the current staff there. Like, exactly. They can all move around. Like, exactly. Pretty can go fullback, center. He can play wing yeah, if you want exactly. to put him there. 100%. You got Taft and go fullback. Exactly. You got, yeah, there's tra Connor Tracy, yeah. center, fullback. Yeah. Everywhere. He, he play, can play anywhere. So exactly. you got a lot of, yeah, so a lot of versatility. There's a few options. Yeah, exactly. It's good. You mentioned in your past you're scared of heights. I have yeah. a similar thing. Yeah. So how do you deal with flying interstate or like going to New Zealand, for example? This is not for our listeners. This is just for him personally. Yeah. <laughs> he's sort of sitting next to him on the plane and he's, and he's grabbing your hand. He's like, please, <laughs> please help me. Oh, well. <laughs> and it's a jet star flight to Gold Coast. Mate, jet, <laughs> jet star kills me. <laughs> no, I've actually gone better. Um, I used to hate it. I used to hate flying. You know, we never – even my dad has – my dad's scared of heights too, so we never really went overseas. My first time overseas was England for World Cup. Wow. Actually, New Zealand before that for footy. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't – like I've gone better. Obviously, you do it nearly like how long – how much – Every second you, week. Like, yeah. Right? yeah. So I've, I've gone better at that, you know, especially the hour ones. But yeah, I just – yeah, I don't – Any techniques? What do you do? Earphones in, close your eyes? <laughs> I just try and sleep. I can't even sleep. I just talk to whoever's next to me. So it's good when you're with the team, <laughs> footy. You just yeah. talk to the boys. But yeah, I've gone all right. I just – Say a prayer and I'm sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, Leave it to who God. do you prefer sitting with on the plane? Is there a preference? Is there someone that talks too much, talks too little? I know this is an annoying pest. Because they do it by alphabetical last oh. name. So I'm always next to Kingy and Kingy can talk. So okay, yeah. Sometimes, but then he puts his – everyone usually has the air, yeah. AirPods on, in. But yeah, some boys, who else? Yeah, when I'm with – when we go on like a big trips with the whole squad, wouldn't mind like sitting next to Jordan, Jordan Lebos. Yeah. So I just have a little laugh with them. Um all the boys are funny. All the boys are good. Yeah. You know, you got um, now. I'm curious to see Critter when you we go away with him because the biggest pest. So see how he goes. <laughs> is Critter a pest? Yeah, he's a pest. Bigger than like fox or taff would be. Like fox a pest. Like, <laughs> nah, Critter's yeah, Critter's a pest. So those two <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah, but apparently, Jesus. like in Penrith, it was like Critter, Drome, and Bizarre did all. Like, oh, it would have been that. chaos. So, like, it would have been like, chaos. Like, I was saying, like, see like, what Critter is now. It's like. Tom's three oh, well. on like, steroids. Yeah. So now he'll just get the speaker. I don't know if you've seen the video. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one. I'm not even joking. That went on for 20 minutes of him in the like him in the shed, um, sheds, just banging the music and just wow. keep pressing that thing for 20 minutes. And like I'm like, and he just keep going. He's, no, he doesn't wow. care. He's the best. He's the How best. That? So That's the energy you want. Oh, you need it. You need it. It's good for the culture. You need right? those so characters. You need that. You need it. So we touched on it before a bit about super coach. I think majority of the rugby league community when they first sort of go, wow, like you are a talent. It was at the start of the season in 2023 when top the Dally M charts. Yeah. I think you were the cheapie of the year for that first few weeks. Everyone's buying you in Supercoach. You had an incredible start. You had So after round three, you were leading it. So was there anything that you did different to get there or could you feel yourself each week going like, this is my field? Um, I feel like I just had, I remember the back end of my debut year, um, I had World Cup coming up, but my body was like, 
because I didn't really have a proper preseason because I was transitioning from Newcastle. So I remember, if I'm being honest, between myself, no one really knew this. I actually wasn't going to go. I was thinking about not going to World Cup. And I was like, yeah, because of my body, the way my hips were. Mm. And I wanted to go preseason under a new coach, you know, just let everything go. I remember Gus was speaking to me about it, saying, um, you know, like, I just want your body right. But, you know, Gus said, it's your country. I want you to play for your country. So, like, wow. but he said, you know, I just want you to come back and be better. Like, be better in terms of get your body right and stuff like that, which I don't blame, you know. So... I think it was that. It was more like I came back from World Cup. I remember I came back early. Like I had two weeks off and came back. I was keen to come back. And I remember I just – I was probably – I was a big professional. That's what I reckon took my game to another level in terms of this diet and um, recovery because I knew what my body was feeling that year. Mm-hmm. So that was the main reason. And I remember, you know, Ciro has helped me heaps mentally in terms of mentally um, toughness. Like I remember in round one – I remember having an ankle injury no one knew about. One Three days before the game, I remember, you know, I had I rolled my ankle, like proper roll. I remember having, like, it was bad. Mm. There was no way I was playing that game, but I remember I just got myself to play in round one against Seagulls and, you know, I did pretty good that game as well and it was more mentally tough. Like, I'm not saying playing through injuries, but I'm saying, you know, like, if it was a grand final, would I play? Yes, that's yes. my point. Like, you know what I mean? Mm. So, you know, um, Sirius helped me heaps in terms of, like, journaling and all that stuff to get you to the next level. Krita does it pretty good. Um, Kikau does it pretty good. Like, you know, I was just happy coming in and um, happy, not happy on playing first grade, but I was just grateful I was playing first grade, but I needed someone like Siri to come to me and say, listen, like, do you journal? I was like, nah, like journal. Like, I'm like, bro, I'll just go out. Like, I'm a lebo. Like, I said, bro, I'll just go, I'll just go in the meetings. Yeah. I listen, I, I run hard, I, I just go run hard, score tries. I don't do video. Whoever's on versing, I don't care. Don't worry about it. Like, that's what I was saying in my head. Yeah, Herbie Farmer, who's he? I don't care. Nah, it's like, yeah, I was saying it like, like, yeah. I like, whatever they're good at, like, I'll make sure I'm ready for it. Like, I, was yeah, just, yeah. I wasn't open minded to it. Yes. But then I, Siri said, you know, like, if you, that's what separates, that's what's going to separate you from being a first grader or being a, one of the elite. So then that got me when he said that. And I remember I took, I bought into it. And then, yeah, coming into that year, I remember, yeah, I remember making a big stance on, you know, I want to be the hardest runner in my team. I remember saying, like, I want to, you know, I'll, I'll let my forwards defend. I want to get him out of trouble. Mm. And I remember I said, I'm just going to run that hard advantage line. I don't care what happens to me. I said that. And I remember keep my legs pumping. You know, I knew I had an offload ability because it was happening in training. And I remember the year before in cup, I was offloading pretty, like in cup, I had heaps, like, the year before in only a certain number of games. So I remember I didn't know I had that ability, but because I got pretty big hands and I used to play basketball as well. So How I big remember, are we talking? Put one next to mine. Oh yeah, fuck, a whole fingertip bigger. <laughs> so yeah, like, yeah, so like I remember I was like, I, I said I have that ability and then I remember I just playing and I remember, because I was like, pretty. everyone says I'm pretty awkward to tackle and awkward to I run. I think it's which, your running style. That's what I'm like, saying. You're like up, down, sort awkward. of all over the place. Exactly, yeah. so I always have a hand free. So I knew I had that package, but yeah, I just said, I just want to run hard and you know, help the boys out and I was feeling pretty, I was feeling really fit. Yeah. You know, I said, I want to just try and, you know, run as much as I could if I can, like not like getting the ways, the boys way, but if I can get the boys out of trouble, like 20, 20, I tried to say 20, 20 runs a game. Cause I remember a coach came up to me after the first game, I had 15 runs and you know, like I said, I don't care about meters, I don't care about runs, but. What do you I, mean? Off air, you told me you play super coach and all you care about is your <laughs> offload, <laughs> <off> tackle <laughs> breaks, getting your runs over eight meters. Nah, stop, That's what man. you told me, didn't you? Nah, <laughs> I have no idea what it is. Bro, bro it is, all bro. our listeners um, hearing this, they're, all they're thinking about is base stats when they're hearing you. Just runs, yeah, tackles, nah. offloads. Nah. You got it all down pat. <laughs> no, nah, I remember that um, round one, I had 15 runs or something because coach came up to me round two against Melbourne. We had the mad winning against them and he came to me. He's like, mm. if you have 20, if we have... If the back five and he could look at them, if you have 20 runs today, we'll win. Like, you know, just wow. make sure you get 20 right. game, uh, twenty runs. And, that was one of your best games of your career as well. Yeah, easy. Um, yeah, that game I remember. Yeah, I just... I don't think you'll forget that one anytime nah, soon. Is in Melbourne too. Two, tr- and, two tries yeah, against Melbourne? Yeah, or two tries. Two tries. And yeah, it's just that game in Melbourne was like, like in Melbourne to do that against them. Like, it honestly felt like at the time we were just like, you know, we were actually like dominating, which mm. is like, I remember on the wing and I was that happy. Eh? I just when the game, the Angles <laughs> yeah. were winning. It was so good. <laughs> And yeah, it was a good win. Well, but. we're South Sydney supporters. We've never actually seen our team win in Melbourne. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amy Park's it's such that, a curse. Yeah, you've got oh. straight away. Like. It's not. It's not easy to win in Melbourne. You guys, nah, they're good. To, yes. Yeah, they're too good there. But yeah, you started the year incredibly, and then round seven, MCL injury against Para. Yeah. How do you deal with injuries? I know it's frustrating. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah, um, that hurt, man. That injury was, you know, um, the way it happened too. It was ugly. Yeah, I think just you know. Me being myself, the way I play, just keep pumping my legs. If someone came around my knee, I didn't think of it. And then 
yeah, just chop my knee off. And <laughs> so yeah, it was bad at the time, but you know, I and the worst thing was Fox done a week before injury, so both wingers is out. Mm. So already everyone was injured, Tavita injured, and then mine was just like, you know, it's just, I'll, you know, it was just, it was a bad time for the club. Like yeah. in terms of injuries, I'm not saying that, never excuses, we're ready to go, mm. ready to go. But in terms of like, that was probably the worst injuries I've seen. And even I think Cyril was saying it, like, the worst like injuries at the same time. So unlucky, yeah. Like, just like yeah, back to back, like back domino, back. bang, bang, bang. Yeah. And it's not and like, both, like lengthy injuries. That's what I was going to well. say. It's not like, you know, it was like four or five one week injury. But I actually remember that. Um, I actually came back from that in two and a half weeks. I saw that. I How is that even possible? Five weeks. MCL in two and a half weeks. <laughs> I just got, like I said, I've just trained my mind mentally. And don't get me wrong, if like, I'm not like, People were saying it to me all the time. My like family was I 100 percent? No, 100 percent. No. I wasn't 100 percent. Like, yeah, I came back two and a half weeks. But was I was I confident that I was just going to do my job? Yes. yes. But was I going to be the person I was at the start? No, because I just no. came. I came back two and a half yeah. weeks. Yeah, you're going to do a good job, really but you weren't going to do like, the no best. No one put job. pressure on me or anything. Everyone says, "Bro, why would you come back that early?" Like I actually told. Like, yeah, you I wanted to tests. play. I done tests to get back, and I told yeah. the coach. I said to the coach, "Like I'm, I'm, I'm going to be back this round." He looked at yeah. me and said. I, like it's up to you just make sure you're ready and I said yeah. no no I told the physios magic round is when I'm back and then Fine. I got myself ready it's a to good go. round to be back isn't oh, it yeah I got magic myself round. to get ready don't get me wrong in that game oh my, I felt my knee that much and you know I was worried about it but I knew that yeah I recovered so I recovered it so much mm-hmm. but yeah it took me a while to you know get back to normal it, it took five weeks which yeah. it's going to take five weeks yeah. <laughs> but I was you know, like I said, if it was a grand final, I was going to play. So if yeah. it was a grand final, I'll play that week. So, so you're pretty much treating every game like a grand final. Yeah. And you're you know, going to be there. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, at the time, we're doing good. And every game is a grand final in my eyes. You know, you, we need to win every game. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Towards like the back end of the season, I think. Yeah. Dogs, there was injuries, a bit yeah. of off-season things that came out. Yeah. The defense just wasn't yeah. happening. There was a few, few points getting leaked left, right and center. Is that something that you guys are looking at in 2024? To improve, is that a big focus, or is it something in the attack? Or no, nah, it's defense, hundred percent, bro. You're right. Um, yeah, last season, you know, wasn't wasn't too good. Um, I think there was, you know, lots of players that weren't buying into it, and you know, now that you know, now that we're in preseason, everyone's buying into it. You know, everyone's buying into the defense. Everyone knows what it's going to look like because you know that, that's that's who we are. That's who we're going to be. You know, we want to be known for our defense and you know like dogs of war. Dogs of war exactly. That's that's the team we're going to be. You know, we want to be a team where teams come out and say, you know, that like we had a, a gritty game. That was hard, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's our focus and you know whoever doesn't want to buy into it then you know they if you know they can go somewhere else, but that's who we are now and you know if, like I said, you know that's how that's who we are going to be for the next how long? So what strategy or little tweaks have has Coach Rado implemented in the defense? I think um, without revealing too much. Obviously. Well, it's the same system as last year, yeah. so it's just more. You know, it's a, it helps too. We've had a year under the system, so yeah. yes. a bit more experience. You know, yeah. it's not easy. You know, even when Penrith done this system the first time, they didn't finish top eight, so it's not it's not an easy yeah. system. But it's but as long as everyone's buying into it, and now everyone's done it for one year, so everyone's got an idea. Yeah. The new boys have came in as you know, they bought into it. So now everyone's just buying into it, and you know, that's what you need. You need everyone on the same page because when everyone's on the same page, and yeah. it's, it's dangerous, honestly. You know, yeah. Tra- um, in terms of intensity, has gone up in training. Like everyone's like, I you know, it's it's good, man. It's the good new to recruits see. would like, help I'm with that. I'm watching and stuff, and it's so good to see. You know, um, yeah, like honestly, it's um, the new recruits are coming in, by, like you know, they're bringing value to the team, and you know, it's it's you know, exciting times ahead. You know, I can't 100%. wait. It's good it's healthy good. competition exactly. as well. All and I think the now no World Cup, like everyone sort of had a clean preseason just all the way through. So no no really exactly. excuses just to buy into this. Exactly, hundred percent. Hopefully no injuries, because like you said, all those injuries plus I think kick out was a massive yeah, injury peck. Yeah. So just keeping everyone on the park and be perfect. hundred yeah, percent. Um but we spoke about before Lebanon at the World Cup. Yeah. So obviously you get the call up to play yeah. Lebanon. Um but you debuted for Lebanon before that. Yeah, uh, before the World Cup. But yeah. looking at the stats, is it correct? You played, was it halfback in one of the games? Yeah, I played- um, Halfback and 14. Back. Yeah, I played 14. That was when, yeah, 14. I played the 2019 test match. Okay. When I was 17. Yeah, and how Coming was, off the bench, yeah, right? And you scored 14. in three minutes no, or some shit? Or try assist, 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 assist. Yeah, assist. that was crazy. And the next game, it said halfback. You were in the number seven and you scored a double. Yep, that was, um, yeah, that was like a- that was a game at Ringrose Park. So it was like the younger boys. Okay. But it was a men's game, but like yeah. all the NRL stars weren't playing, but yeah. I played that game. So yeah. But the 2019 test was my actual debut. Yeah. And, you know, that was – when I got the call up for that, it was crazy because I remember I just signed with Cowboys and then I get the call up saying, listen, um, we're going to – you know, we need you. Um, we want you to play. We don't know. We want you to play maybe 5'8 or 14. And I was like, 
like, are you serious? And then they're like, yeah, we got, you know, Leisha, Tim Manor, Robbie Farrow. And at the time, you're 17, I freaked yeah. out. When I went to camp, I was, you know, I was star, starstruck. Honestly, I was. Who were some a, of the players in, in the squad that you just remember looking at going, shit, I'm, I'm going to be playing alongside them? Like Tim Manor. Tim Manor, yeah. yeah. Tim Manor, Tim Manor like, I'm be, like I'm really close with him now. So it's crazy. You know, he even he said back then, he's like, you know, you're going to, it's crazy because he said to me, you're going to be, you know, I can't wait to see you in NRL and do well. And you and know, you're like, like 17 at this stage. I was stage. 17 and I, he's like, even like, like Fra- haven't, even haven't Farrell, played. Because Farrell, yeah. I was at World Cup with him. He was at one of our coaches. So yeah. Him. yeah. So it was good to play with all of them. You know, it was just, it was a good experience. And I was like 72 kilos at the time. I was a stick <laughs> oh, coming on the bench and off the bench. I remember we were versus Fiji. They, like, they pumped us. I think they bet us 52 to six or 12. But 58 to 14. Yeah, yeah crazy. They I remember that you. game. We walk in the side with them, walking on, like, see kick out and stuff. It's crazy now. Because I speak about kick out. I'm like, do you remember me? And he's like, nah, like, he wouldn't remember. <laughs> yeah, nah. But, but that was, they were that big. It was like, oh. Like, Especially as a seven, 72 kilo player. You're looking at 17. these big units. Was that, <laughs> were you just out of, still in high school then? Or I just, just finished high school. Oh, my. No, God. no, that was actually, no, sorry. That was year during 12, high school. Because it? it was during, remember they did the mid year test? That was the mid year oh. test. So it was during high school. So did you go back to high school feeling like the kid? It was actually funny because I went back to um, that week. That week we played on the Saturday. I actually had a grand final for school on the Thursday. Oh, and I remember go? speaking to my coach in Lebanon saying, "Listen, I got a grand final um, on a fir- this like this was a start because we were on camp. I was like, I got a grand final on Thursday for school, and he's like, listen, like I don't want you to miss out on that. Like you only go to school mm. once. So go play." But then I remember Wednesday we had a post session and Martin to power late clip me and I done my AC joint. So, oh. so I had to try and get ready for the Jesus. Saturday game. Yeah, I remember like putting a kick in mad, like it was mad kicking goal. Fuck. And I remember bang, just and then I remember I didn't play Thursday, I went to, but they let me go watch and it, it felt mad. When I went back to school, it actually felt good because like yeah, it was crazy. Lebanese international, it's huge. Yeah, like, like it was huge, especially as, you know, as not, a high school many senior player. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like crazy. But it was a good experience. I was like, you know, playing for my country is something different, so that's good. And then, yeah, so then the World Cup in the UK, how was that trip? Loved it? Yeah, that was the best experience. Um, first time actually overseas, you know, to like other than New Zealand. So it was a long trip, oh, <laughs> a long trip. But it was good. You know, the boys were the best. Like it's good to hang out with your culture, you know, it's the same boys that exactly like you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, went there, played there. And, you know, the boys, a good bunch of boys. Um, you know, we had a top coach, top staff. And, you know, I – yeah, I can't wait for the next one. So, you know, really yeah. grateful for that. Like playing alongside, like obviously when you debuted, there wasn't as many like yeah. NRL stars playing. Then you got someone like Mitchell Moses yeah. in your team, experience. Josh Mansell, who I'm sure you would have looked up to. Yeah, Very similar game style in terms yeah. of output and hardworking wingers. So, yeah, you would have seen just – and like you said, Robbie Farrell. <laughs> yeah, it was – um, yeah, we had we had lots of players. You know, we had Adam Adam Dwayne as well. Do, yeah. Um, but, yeah, Mitch Moses, like I'm speaking to the coach and – um. Said to the coach, I actually said to him that year, this was after debut, I said, listen, um, I want to play fullback. Mm. And then he's like, I want you to play fullback. So it was mad. So because we had, I said, I knew we had Mitch, Adam, and then I was at the back. So, you know, we had to, it was good, man. Like I was, it was good, especially playing, right? Mitch is, a, you know, Mitch and Ads are top players. Like mm. you watch him, but then when you actually play with him, like it's unbelievable. So yeah, that's like Mitch, you know, that's why he's one of the best, you know, one of the best halfbacks in the game, the way mm. he just, you know, and don't get me wrong, we didn't have really a, like we had a big forward pack, but it wasn't like we didn't have Twally. Twally had oh, missed yeah. out, so we had a young forward pack. But the way Mitch was just you know leading the team and Adam, it was unbelievable. And you know it was good for my development as well because I was there as an NRL player, so I had to actually you know be a leader mm. to all these young people. And for me, I was just starting my career, so that actually got me you know got me confident in you know hopefully you know being a leader one day as well. So hundred yeah. percent. And as on a World Cup, it's not all footy. I'm sure you guys went out. Clubbing, sightseeing. Can yeah. you tell us a bit about that? Any yeah. good stories? Yeah, um, yeah. We obviously, you know, went. We weren't going, you know, as wild like in terms of out. We're actually pretty like we actually wanted to do good, you know. We did yeah. pretty good considering, you know. But um, yeah, we went to Paris. Um, did we go to Paris? I went saw the what's it called? Eiffel the, Tower. Nah, the Ben, Big Ben. Oh, London. Oh, London. London. yeah, London. Yeah, Big Ben. London yeah, for free, yeah, London. Sorry, yeah. we've got mixed up. <laughs> we went to London for three days. Um, stayed there. The team they took us there, so it was mad. We just went everywhere. We stayed at. Man- we actually stayed in Manchester, so we stayed in a mad spot. Manchester's so good. You into your Premier League at all? 
Like well, I, went, I, bro, I, I can't watch soccer. I hate soccer. But, <laughs> but I honestly went there. Ronaldo was playing for Manchester at the time. We and watched the game. Best like best atmosphere ever, just chanting. Yeah. Lebos and, then, and Ronaldo, the match made in heaven. Oh, <laughs> it was funny too because a couple of the Lebos were in. It was, I, mean, I think it was Man City versus Man United. Oh, you went and, to the derby, yeah. Yeah, and then some boys were wearing like other gear. Like they were all wearing different gear. But then there was another game that was happening. I don't know what game, but one of my our team is like, stuff, I'm going to wear this gear. But then I remember walking, bro, these fans are full serious. Eh? They would bash him and everything because they're wearing <laughs> the wrong gear in the city. The, oh my I think God. it was, um, I think Man United played another game against, like, I don't know, maybe it might have been like Liverpool or something like yeah. that. We were in Liverpool and I was like, bro, like, we in yeah, Manchester as well. And then we're like, like even our well, coach getting abused, other people. Like, yeah, our coach was saying, "Take it off, bro." Like we don't need this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hard <laughs> over there. So your coach was Michael Checker, right? Yeah, he's best. Fuck, what was that like? Like, great rugby union coach coming to rugby league. Bro, he was coaching us in Argentina at the same time. Really? Yeah. So and how, how was that transition for him going from two different codes? Yeah, like he um he had Robbie Farah, Matt King, who's a part of the Roosters yep. now, part of the system for Blues. Oh wow, yeah. So he had Matt King, Robbie Farah, um. Who else? Yeah, that, that that's it. They had them two, and they they were more of the footy stuff, and Czech was more just simple, run hard, tackle hard, and the way he speaks, I've I've, I've said it, and I, he's one of the best. Like the how you speak as a coach to a player is one of the best I've ever seen. Like he knows how to rev you up and g you up, but not like too much. Mm. Like we'll be there night before a game, and he's talking like playing videos, the right videos, like about everything. Like one day before New Zealand, like he made like you know, and look, we actually did pretty good considering like. He said to us, like, he made us believe, like, you know, we're going to go out there and win. And we actually believed that. Yeah. When we versed Australia in the semi, like, I know we got pumped. But before that, like, he said to us, like, you know, like, everyone thinks this, like, get that out of your head. If you think that, you're going to lose. Like, so the yeah, way like, he spoke was You only lost to New Zealand by 22 points, which yeah. is nothing, you know. Yeah, it was like 14, Like, in the past, down. you yeah, guys would have been getting pumped by 40 plus. So, and we got it's a great effort. Yeah, because <laughs> we got one sin bin too. Or oh, there off. you go. Adam, yeah, Adam. So... <laughs> Yeah, it was like the way he speaks, he's a top coach. Is there any it? like quote or takeaway that you can remember distinctly that it's, it's almost still resonated with you now in 2024? What, just from him? Yeah, just from him, like something you said. I remember you played a video. Um, he played a video, but this was more like a touching video yep. from the families. Played a video of all like the fa- – he got the families – to put a video like wishing us luck and stuff. Wow. And like when he did that, like all the boys, like some boys were teary, some yeah, boys, you know, were. Yeah, because yeah, like we were like away seven weeks away from well, home. And you know, yeah. that, like we, like as well, like we did this for our culture. So all yeah. our family is like, that's why we're doing it. Like yeah. we couldn't play if they're not like Lebanese. It's just yeah, exactly. Like, it no. So we, we, you know, we had our grandparents saying, you know, um, good luck. And yeah, that, I remember he brought that up. And you know, that was like something, you know, like, you know, hit lots of the boys. Some boys were crying because I had some family that was sick. So, yeah. you know, it was the best thing seeing that. So that's probably what, you know, touched me as well. So, it was, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Checker being so that, good. I, I still find that crazy. He was coaching Argentina. and We had dinner with the Argentinian. Oh, really? Yeah, he's like, oh, because they were training in London. And I remember he would go in the morning, go train with them and come back to us. What? And then some of our boys that's went so and watched good. it and they end up winning that. They won against oh, England, really? I'm pretty sure. The big upset one. The big upset. That was it. We started messing on group chat. Yes, check. You beast. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, we'll is up. he still the coach of Lebanon now? Or? Yeah, he's still the coach now. Like, we we're supposed to actually go. He, he's the best. He actually organized um, a Lebanon trip. Whoever wanted to go to Lebanon, all the boys. But then, obviously, what's happening now in the Middle East yeah. wasn't right. Um, it was around, I think, um, off season. So, mm. but then, yeah, like yeah. I said, what's happening now isn't too good. But he said that we all need a plan. We'll go to Lebanon together. So, yeah. That's mad. Yeah, it's crazy. Like we're sitting here. I'm 24. Mix is going to turn 24. You're 22. Yeah. You're two years younger than us, and you've already had a great career so far. A lot to come. But let's talk about Bulldogs 2024. We have a lot of Bulldogs fans that are listening, and they want to know. They want to. They want positivity. Yeah. They want to know. Is 2024 the year? I'm sure you've heard like the conspiracies. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. Do you believe in that? Because Edwards didn't believe in that. When we had no, him I've on. seen it. I've seen it around heaps. And everyone's saying it to me too. So <laughs> it's kind of like it's making me believe it now. Yeah. But um, yeah, I see it everywhere. Everyone's like, what, the 04? And then yeah, the every, the every, win, lose, every win, 10, lose. Yeah, every 10 years old. That's crazy. Yeah. Have you heard about the leap year one? It's what? not a theory, but it's an actual fact. So you guys have won the most premierships on a leap year. Doggies have won four. Well, yes. See. That's crazy. Yeah. That's <laughs> but crazy. South have also won four. So don't worry. We're still there. Oh, Might yeah. be South Doggies G. You know what? There's a staff for everything these days. Yeah. <laughs> so crazy. Who comes up with this stuff, eh? Him. I did. <laughs> well, like, like, he sits there I went back since 1908 and I did all the leap years and dogs had fours. Like, mate, it's your year. Everything's leading towards the doggies. Yeah, no. Nah, 2024. Um, 
Uh, it's, I'm excited, man. You know, we like I said, the, the one thing we could ask for from all the boys and myself is, you know, everyone just buys into it. Yep. And, you know, yep. that's what I see this year compared to last preseason. The intensity has gone up with um, everyone's buying into it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Training you know, camp's getting harder? or tra- Yeah. If we had an army camp, you know, that wasn't too Where's much. Where's that based? That was at um, Queensland in the bush. Yeah. That wasn't, oh, yeah, right. that wasn't fun. That's my first army camp. Or, oh, that was your first. And yeah. what do they get what you is doing? It, yeah, what's an army camp look like? Like how people? long How long would someone like us, regular blokes, just last in an army camp? I don't know, you, can, you can be ruthless. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I, don't, I don't think a regular person would last like a day in, pre- <laughs> a day in pre-season. Yeah. It's, it's not, yeah, it's it's honestly, yeah. But that's, that's you know, we love, that's what we do. And, you know, we only do it for three months and we start playing games and we yeah. love it. So. And how, how long does that army camp go for? Three days. And is it? Like no sleep. Is, what's yeah, the, just what's wake you up three a.m. Um, oh. Blindfolded, walking places, jumping off. That was the worst. That's what I was going to say to you before. Um, I think we were paragliding. No, not paragliding. The wrong one. Um, the other one where they jump off the buildings with the ropes. The army oh, the bungee jumping. Nah, um, oh, I, I like a s- sky. I know what it is. You know uh, when they jump off and then they yeah, keep, yeah and they like, go down the building. Yeah, so we did that. Oh, like ab- 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 Oh, nice, nice. Absolutely. We did Fuck. that. I remember looking down and I was like, there's no way. There's some boys who was like, and the, I, I hate heights, yeah, but I yeah. didn't say that to them. Like, oh, no, no, no. I wanted yeah, to let them know. I didn't care. Yeah. But I remember even jumping off like 20 meter, like or 15 meter into a pool. Yeah. We're doing all that <laughs> stuff. Jumping in blindfolded in the river. They're just pushing Far you. Out. It was actually brutal. It was one of the, you know, I said, Jesus, it was one of the like, most hardest things I've ever done physically. Just to get mentally you mentally fit for the year. In my, in my life. It's just, yeah. And it brings, bro, after that camp, us boys have gone like this because at the end of the day, when you're, mm. Like when you're struggling and that, the people on the field is who you have, you know, your teammates. So you need you need to build that trust. Yeah. And when you have trust, that's, you know, like, like that's what I say. You, you can't, like back in the year, we're losing by that much. That's just all trust. That's not connection. You know, when you're connected yeah. with a team, yes, you might lose by six points, 12 points. Yeah, but you're but not when getting you lose by that much, that means there's no trust, there's no connection, there's yeah. no buying into it. So no, that's what's, you know, we've bought into so much this year. So you can tell a big difference from the end of last year to now. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like no one's, you know, everyone's just buying in. No one's complaining. Everyone just, you know, everyone just, you know, just happy to be there and just learning on the go. And, you know, even for myself, everyone, you know, we just, you know, it's good. And we just want to get everything out of this preseason to get us into the season. 100%. Mm. And it's going to be an exciting season, obviously, with all the new signings, which I will read. <coughs> uh, Crichton, Curran, Sherry, Taffy, Salmon, Hutcho, Tracy, Kurtman and Turpin. That's a lot of new fresh faces. Is your wing spot under under screen? No, no. <laughs> well, the spot no, in the thirteen. There's a lot of people going right. for it. No, never be. Um, yeah, I'm no, never be complacent. Yeah. Um, but who who is impressing you out of some of those new signings that you've seen? It's so obviously a few. You've had a few training sessions. That you can yeah, learn. Kurt Mann's. You know, Kurt Mann's. You know, he's actually pretty tough. You know, he, um, he's. I think he's from the country, so that's probably why. It's yeah. all made out of bricks. He's just hitting people in training. Um, all, all the all the boys have been going really good, you know. You got that experience and from Critter, the talk mm. he, you know, when he's came late um, November into the team or late December, you know, preseason, he's brought a lot in terms of his leadership. You know, he's, what he's done in whatever how many years, so he's brought a lot. Um, you know, Taffy's got that you know X factor about him. There are lots of boys, you know, all the boys have you know bought into it, and you know they're all looking so good. So it's good to see. And it's good for competition, like you said, you know, mm-hmm. everyone, like everyone can't be complacent, you know, which you want. You don't want anyone to be complacent no. and comfortable. So it makes us all, you know, it makes everyone fight for the position and as you want, you know. And a lot of those players have come from teams that were maybe in the top four, top eight. So they're bringing that standard that they know from exactly. the club that's yeah. worked for them in 2023. Exactly. And that's what it's about. Like you said, they've all come from successful clubs. So they know what it looks mm-hmm. like. So, you know, it's good to see what they think. Yeah, that's promising. Uh, is there anyone that's going to break out this year? Rookies to watch. We all play super coach. We're looking for a cheapie. Give us, a, give us your opinion. Yeah, there's um, one of our props. His name's Samuel Hughes. Yeah. We call him Hughesy. Um, played a few games last year. Only, yeah, yeah, he played a, yeah, he played um, a four games last year. But he, um, he was, you know, copping a bit of injuries last year. He wasn't um, at his fittest. And, well, I know that now because he's – Probably the fittest in our team for a front roller who's probably one of like the fittest forward or the fittest nah, player. Like he's probably our fittest. Like every time I watch um watch him do fitness, we're doing fitness, he's like a leading. And when I say leading, not like one rep, like every rep. Everyone freaks out. I went up to him after I'm like, bro, like that's actually crazy. Like doesn't he wow. weigh like over one fifteen kilos? He's like one ten or one twelve or something, and it's just like, yeah, like he's honestly, he's actually one of the fittest. And it, for his wow. big boy, it's crazy. crazy. That's not normal. <laughs> like, so 
Yeah, when it's a long distance running, he's just pumping everyone. Jesus, let me write that down now. <laughs> Sam Hughes, cheapy. Yeah. Oh, he's in my team. But even intensity, like he'll be training and he doesn't care. Like he's bumping off our – like he doesn't care. He just runs hard. Yeah. He's like a – He's a good man. He's good to have him. Like you want to be. So you reckon Lay will push for a 17 spot, maybe yeah, on the bench or something? Yeah. Under yeah. five minute Broncos locked in. <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. What is your Bronco time, by the way? My one? Yeah. I actually didn't. I didn't do it because um, all the boys did it. I didn't do it because I'm still recovering from yep. a back injury. What about like in the past? What have, what, what have you got in a Bronco? My best Bronco was 447. 447. Yeah, but I need to be better than that. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I was doing Broncos at the park, but I was using steps to calculate it instead yeah. of the, the thing. And I got. 459 oh, and they're all roasting me like you you didn't do 20 meters distance yeah. went to the park i got 613 oh, okay. i got humbled <laughs> okay, hard yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not <laughs> easy are oh. there players that have got worse than me like this preseason 613 no no, no one's getting worse than no. that's rubbish what's, what's like the worst you have to name probably the, the first no, i won't name the player but i think yeah a couple of boys were getting probably over 530 five, maybe 540 probably still was. solid but, but, yeah. then, no, no, but that was the first day of pre yeah, but then no, they all yeah. came back after Christmas first and day bang. I'm not even joking every player got under 5 except for probably every player every player except for maybe 2 boys Wow, and they got 5, 7 or 5, 10 wow, that's impressive right. yeah that's actually so yeah. right now we actually yeah, everyone's pretty Broncos fit. are not easy no, they are they're fucked. Not. <laughs> um, so yeah what is the goal for the dog is it's obviously everyone wants to win a premiership yeah. is there a like a smart goal that's just like that minimum stand that you want to hit yeah obviously you know we I'll be lying if I say I don't want to play finals footy yeah. and the team. You know, we want to play finals footy 100%. But I think it's just, yeah, the goal is to be in the top eight, but just just chipping away, chipping away every game. Mm. I feel like we just need to focus on every game how it is. Like, And then it, we, it just happens. Like, you know, I feel like if we keep saying, you know, let's play finals and, you know, we, we're looking too much at the bigger picture mm. when, you know, that's that's going to – that's we got our long-term goals, which our long-term goal is the premiership. That's yep. anyone. That's I want to win a premiership, you know. Uh, everyone in my team wants to win a premiership, but – feel like that's you know i could promise that you know we're going to be you know very very i feel like how do i explain it like we're hungry very yeah. hungry this year you know what's happened the last couple of years and i don't i don't blame fans for I always say i don't blame fans for thinking the way they were they do you know after we lose because i was I, I'm a, I was a doggies fan i it's hate hard when, to do with a loss, when, eh? like, when you lose you're filthy you know yeah and even when i was a fan i used to when i was a kid run away when we used to lose like lose yeah. from my uncles i used to hate it so i actually know how they feel and you know it's the worst and so when i hear the fans upset you know i know i I don't blame him. You know? You're in the community. You're in the community. You, you, you feel oh, it in here. You I were a doggies fan. Like, oh, you exactly. literally so them. I, I, exactly. So I know the feeling. And, you know, I I can just promise that, you know, we're going to go out and, you know, we're going to play with, you know, our heart. We're going to, you know, we're, everyone's buying into it now. And it's it's looking good, honestly. And, you know, as long as, you know, everyone goes out and just puts their best foot forward, I'm sure that the results will come. And, you know, if everyone's buying into it. But, yeah, I don't blame the fans for what they're thinking. But, yeah, I, I can just say, you know, exciting times ahead. So it, it feels like, like feels that. like that you guys want to put in performances that like you're proud of that you can walk exactly. in the pitch and go. Like, All right, even if we lost, competitive we, we every did. Week, we were, you know, lose to Melbourne by like, six, but you're in the game. Exactly, yeah. like you lose by four points. Like you know, it's like I said, that's that's a gritty loss. Like you, you yes. know, you tried your hardest, you lost yeah. by four. They're going to feel yeah. it the next day. They're going to yeah. know they had a challenge. Yeah. Exactly, but when you're losing by, you know, how much we were losing, you yeah. know, it's, it's not good. And that's when, like I said before, that comes with trust. That comes with yeah. no trust, no connection. Yeah. And you know, but yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm really excited, and the boys are all excited. Mm. Just you know, good to you know, get the preseason, you know. Good and yeah, we'll come. Yeah. So and, obviously and you, you got guys, the conspiracy theory behind. Yeah, it. the conspiracy yeah, is backing you up. Yeah, but see? obviously, you guys really want to make finals. If you finish tenth, is that a pass or a fail? No, it's in my head. I want to win everything. So yeah. It's a, even in the boys' head. So it's it's a it's it's a fail. Yeah. It's like I can't. You know, even if we make finals and we finish fourth, like or fifth, like it's still a fail. Like you want to it's win. It's a win, but, yeah. but it's yeah. a win in terms of everyone says that like, improvement. Like you look yeah, at what yeah. the Warriors have done. You know, it's yeah, stuff crazy. like that. But I'm saying, yeah, like I can't. I just want, like I said, I know that if we all buy into it and do good, we will succeed it's yeah. just you know mm. but like i said i want to win everything i want to win the comp and you know i know, I know it will happen but it's just when it is it will, mm. we'll see so it's good love it there you go doggies fan 2024 making finals hopefully win the comp for your sake that's it bro um so we played this game with preston and edwards yeah. age will get you the whiteboard and oh, the yes. old marker so go. uh i don't know if you saw it, but basically we're gonna ask you who is most yeah. likely to and it's you write down a teammate's oh, name rub it off after yeah, easy bro you write down a teammate's name yeah flip the board over the camera make sure it can see it loud and clear and then you explain why that player okay. so yeah. how's your handwriting because yeah. Ed, Ed was pathetic <laughs> couldn't even read <laughs> it well make it big and yeah, make it as big. long as we can read yeah. it. Oh, no, make it big. all right so first one teammate most likely to go on love island 
hard because I would have said a couple of boys, but they were taken. Yeah, so they have to be single. Yeah, I don't want to put the boys on the spot. No, you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to stitch <laughs> them up. <laughs> um, Are you single? No. You're not, okay. Yeah. So you can't go on. <laughs> um, Is Gussie, Gussie single? Not a Gussie. teammate though. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm just going to say? Oh, he has a missus, but you know what? He's, he suits him. All right, here we go. So he's riding. He's riding. All right, turn go. around to the camera. Blake Wilson. Blake Wilson, the rig of doom. <laughs> he yeah, would um, tear up Love Island. Yeah, so <laughs> it's just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I was thinking about it then. That was my first reaction. I was like, yeah, he just suits it. Yep. And the way you look at his rig. He's oh, got the yeah. body. You can just oh, have God. the shirt off the whole Beach day. Beach boy. That's but, yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. That's it. Do some push it off. off. So um, I would say... Yeah, Blake. That's so. a good one. Who would you say, Mick? Do you have anyone in mind? For the dogs? Yeah. Hmm. I reckon Bronson Cherry will go good. You know what? That's a good call. Yes. Bronson Cherry. Cherry's He's single good. too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's got the rig now. Helen you know even loves the rig. Helen? <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen that video. That's the best. That's the best video. <laughs> All right. So the next one. Teammate most likely to become an NRL coach. So who's in, who's in the sheds? They're talking, they got the strategy. If it was past one, you could probably say Josh Reynolds. Yeah, I would have. But like technically, we, we'll say current teammate. Um, All right. Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm saying Critter. I reckon Critter. Yeah, because yeah, just in terms of, he's probably the, no one, knows. I'm pretty sure everyone knows it, but he's probably one of the most smartest footy IQ. Like he's actually really, really smart. Really, really, really smart. In the meetings, what he says and stuff is unbelievable. And he's good at like portraying it and like yeah. saying it to everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. And yeah, I, I, you know, he's still 23 years old, which is crazy. Yeah. Like, only one year older than you. That's I know, crazy. It's crazy. So I'll, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And he's so won three comps. Unbelievable. So I reckon, yeah, I reckon he will probably be a good coach. Mm. Beautiful. In the future, that's a surprising one. I wouldn't have said that, but. You know, obviously I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, teammate most likely to avoid their round at the pub. So who's that stingy player who just maybe go to the toilet when it's their round or someone that's oh, you know, straight oh, away. Oh, one, there was no thought oh, about this. The, <laughs> who is it? A fox. Let's trot to the Let's toilet. Trot, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's trot. No, no, fox is the best. But um, yeah, I don't know. Fox say one. He's not, he's not a tight ass, but yeah. I could just see him doing it. Yeah. He's, just like, he's like that. He'll just, he's too fast. He'll just run off. Right. He's like, oh, I'll be back. I'll go bathroom. Yeah. I can just, that's something you would say. Yeah. So. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Fox my boy. Uh, that's good. Uh, teammate most likely to win a five-kilometer run. I think you've already revealed yeah. it, but write it down well, maybe just for we the change sake it of it. To most likely to win a marathon. Who can go that? Probably could be the same. Who's got the, <laughs> who's, yeah, who has the biggest motor? Who can beat the head the dogs? No. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back in my boy. I'm You're back backing the big Sam prop. Hughes. Sam Hughes. I'm wow. telling you, like I'd, yeah. over Taffy, like Fox, everyone. Yeah. How, old, how old is Sam? My age. Oh god. 22. Okay. So yeah, mate. He's getting oh, I'm not telling you what I've seen from preseason, and yeah, all the boys would agree. It's unbelievable mm. what how like fit he actually is. And that's crazy. So just like that's what I'm saying. The long runs is actually what he he's better at. When it's a okay. one point two, it's his he's not turns, as fast. It's his turns too big. Yeah, he's too big, but he still gets like. 440 or something. Four, wow, but it's but the only reason why he doesn't get more of that is because he's turned. Like, you've got Taffy who will kill it in that. Um, yeah, Toby Sexton's pretty fit too. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, so yeah Toby Sexton's fit. So he'll do good at all that stuff. Mm. we got actually, you know, young um, Khaled Rajab as well. Oh, yeah. Lebanese, yeah. Um, Lebanese mate as well. So he's actually coming. He's like, he's actually one of the fittest as well. How's he going? Because I haven't heard much of him lately. Yeah, he's going really good. He's yeah. came into preseason. He's, you know, his yeah. body's looking the best it's looked. Is he a halfback 5'8"? Halfback 5'8", yeah. fullback. Fullback even. So, um, yeah, he's probably, he's pretty fit too. But Samuel, he's just, he's the way he just, um, yeah, the way he just, he loves his long distance. He just keeps running. Right. It's and crazy. Gus, Gus Gould came out and said he's the one to be the president of 2024. Well, he's going to break out. Well, what I've seen as well from him. And it seems like you're echoing that. So, fuck. Yeah, no, I'm happy for Sam him. Hughes, that's on my list. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, the last one. Teammate most likely to win a 100-meter sprint. So, you got, you got Bronson players. Cherry yeah. coming in there now. Roger Fabry reckons he's top three in the NRL. 
You got Fox. Critters fast. Critters fast. Um, you I'm got you? Nah, not I'm backing back in, yourself. I'm back in Fox. Fox. Yeah, Fox. Fuck. I remember I got put on another. Um, I got put on a podcast before because I said someone will beat him in a hundred, and then if I went to training, I copped it for like two weeks from him. But then, <laughs> then he no, but then he beat he beat the record the next week. Oh really? Yeah, oh. that's why. So I was like, to him, I motivated you. <laughs> <laughs> he actually beat. So, I think this was the Titans when he hit thirty eight point seven. Or the Tulsa yeah. Tracker. Yeah, the top like, speed. He hit the top speed. Yeah. I think it's, it's still there. I don't no think no one's going to beat that. No, no one will beat Unless that. Saab decides to put his head down, and just go hard yeah. out. But no, nah, Fox over hundreds. Um, yeah, like still. He, so he's still got it. He hasn't lost his nah, pace. He hasn't got it. Because he's big no, he now. Hasn't lost. I mean, he's he's big. Like hasn't lost. But Fox is is like he's always been ripped. But yeah, yeah he's gone big. But he's mm. still quick. Like he's unbelievable Far fast. Out. That's insane. I think because he's just yeah. Like no one's really seen him in proper space, especially last year. He didn't really get the boy in like space. Yeah. But when he did, oh, he was flying. Yeah, I remember. There was he, one he does where that like, one where he like ducks in and out and then just. Yeah, like yeah, it comes from the yeah, yeah it's crazy. Yeah, he's never just running dead straight, so that's yeah, probably he's why. Good. So yeah, I'm backing him. Uh, one more. I'm just gonna make this one yeah. off the top of my head. Teammate most likely to become prime minister. Oh, he's quick. He's quick. He's got his oh, head. A little smirk as well. Who's this? Oh no. I'm he's... keen to see this one. He's got a smile on his face <laughs> too. Because you know what? All the boys would agree on this one. That's why. Max King. Max King. <laughs> he's got the name King. He... It's yeah, the title. Why, why do you reckon Max King? No, nah, because like I said, he can he can talk. Max King can talk. Yeah. So when we're in meetings now, he just talks and he just talks. <laughs> but like not like he just like like he'll get a point across, but he'll just talk. So all the, all the boys love him for that. So I reckon he actually he loves like you know like like he debates here and there too. So yeah. I reckon. Yeah. Oh, there you I go. Fair him, play. Max King, King the next King PM. as well. So yeah, Prime Minister King. One thing we do with all our guests is uh, we have Hus here. He's our little editor, but we also get all our guests to sign the back of it. That's so I give you the so give you this marker. We'll Pick wherever yeah. you want on the back of Hus there. Anywhere? Anywhere you want. Easy, so that's all I guess we've had on. Now you're you're on there. First NRL player of 2024 as well. So it's a bit of an achievement, you know. Number one podcast in the world. Three Lebos on in one fortnight. That's a, that that's a, a world record. record. That has to be a world record. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, you know, we had the Caruz brothers on last week. Thank they you. speak very highly of you, obviously. Yeah, they're good, man. They're the best. They're funny. Oh, it's too funny. Oh, well. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming on. Absolute pleasure. We, time, we've bro. had you on the Black Book for ages. No. Try to get in contact with you. I know, man. Oh, we want you to enjoy your Christmas, but thanks for coming on. As soon as you're, you're done with the training, like Wednesday's off, obviously. Exactly. So. No, it's good to yeah, it's good to be on. Um, you know, I wanted to come on here for a while, and you know, it's good we finally done it. So thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks, guys. Well, best of luck in 2024, and yeah, thanks again for coming on. Anytime, Anytime bro. Thank you.